Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Take 5. I hope you're having a great day so far today. This week on Take 5, we are breaking down the message that I preached this past Sunday. It was actually part two in a series that we entitled The Missing Peace. Uh, by now, you know that's play on words. It's not the P-I-E-C-E, -E, but the P-E-A-C-E, -E, that missing supernatural peace of God that seems to be void in the lives of so many of God's people. Uh, from Isaiah, we have drawn a pretty strong conclusion about two different types of people, the, the saved and the unsaved, the regenerate and the unregenerate, believers and unbelievers. And this is what the Bible says. This is the promise to each of them. To the believers, God says, I will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast on me because they trust me. Then to unbelievers, the unsaved, he says, the wicked are like the tossing sea that cannot rest, whose waves cast up mire and mud. There is no peace, says God, to the wicked. Two different kinds of people, two different kinds of promises. I've been asking this question since Sunday before last, and I ask it again to you today. Why is it that the people, the saved, the regenerate, the born again, the people of God that have the promise of perfect peace, if we'll only set our minds steadfast on the Lord and trust Him, why is it that we so many times look, act, and respond more like the people that have the, the promise of no peace absolutely at all? I hope in this series of devotions and this series of messages, I hope we can come to understand that somewhere along the way. Now, Jesus spent some time with the disciples right prior to His arrest and uh, his suffering and his crucifixion. And he, he did so to encourage them and to pray for them and to warn them about some very serious times they were going to face. He told them that they were going to have some very dreadful times and dreadful seasons in front of them. People were going to hate them. People were going to persecute them. People were going to throw them out of the church. Uh, people There were going to be even some that would come along that would kill them and think they were doing God a favor. And if you're like me, we would have wanted God to say, they're going to try to do all that, but I'm going to stop it all before it starts. But that's not the solution God offered. God could have done anything. The creator of the universe could have stopped all of those problems before they ever began. But the only answer he gave them, the only solution that he promised them, the only hope and promise of deliverance that he offered them was his peace. My peace, Jesus said, I, I give unto you, not as the world gives. And then in John 16, he said, I've told you all these things so you will have peace. In the world, you'll have trouble. But be of good cheer, take heart, I've overcome the world. We cannot allow our minds to control our emotions and our thoughts. If we let them have free reign, they'll just take us from one exaggerated fear and worry and anxiety and temper tantrum to the next. We've got to keep our mind focused on the Lord, and we do it by turning to His Word. Remember, Isaiah said, those whose minds are steadfast on me, well, we keep our mind on Him and we continue thinking about Him by turning to His Word. Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they that love your law and nothing shall offend them. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing at all shall offend them. Now, the word offend doesn't mean hurt your feeling, friend. That, that word has to do with a stumbling block or a distraction that hinders or restrains. It is a feeling of doubt that causes hesitation or reluctance to do a thing. So he tells us when we love his word, when we love his law, when we love his command, nothing will be a stumbling block, nothing will be a distraction, nothing will cause us to hesitate or be reluctant because we have his peace. That same verse from the voice translation says, those that love your law have an abundance of peace. Watch this now. And nothing along their path will cause them to stumble. Nothing in their path, nothing that life brings them will cause them to stumble because they love your word and it has given them peace. The living Bible of the same verse says, those that love your word have great peace of heart, your emotions and of your mind, your thoughts, and they do not stumble. Nothing makes them stumble because they have peace because they love your word. Now, if you want the peace that Jesus had, then we're going to have to get the word in us like Jesus had in us. When there is an 
uh, an overabundance of anxiety and fear and anger and frustration in our life, when it's greater than our peace, it's because there's a lack of God's Word in our life. I know you just want to flip a switch, but you can't just flip a switch and make it go away. We're going to have to continue in the Word. Jesus said, if you continue in my Word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hey, if you love something, you do it repeatedly. So what do you say? Let's get in the Word of God, and let's let that peace that passes all understanding, let's let it come to life in our lives in every situation that arises. Well, our time's come and gone. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to being with you right here tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Hold on to the Word. Stay in it. Love it. Continue in it. And have a great and peaceful day.